All right, hi, it's Mark Redman from Mandorla Music, and I'm here with Carmen Stoff this afternoon, and we're uh, I'm so happy to have a chance to chat a little bit in advance of this Saturday's um, concert. Uh, I was really lucky to get to um, spend a day with Carmen and with uh, bassist Tony Cher and drummer Austin McMahon a couple of weeks ago to record what is going to be the the return of the Dot Jazz series, which is uh, Mandorla Music's presenting partnership with Greater Ashmont Main Street. I'm so happy to be uh, reviving that. I hope that we'll get back to in-person concerts in Dorchester uh, before too long. But for now, we've got this really exciting thing coming up on Saturday. And I'm thanks so much, Carmen, for taking some time this afternoon to, to chat a little bit about this ensemble and about what else you've got going on these days. Thank you, Mark. It's a pleasure. And we had so much fun playing. You know, we're, we're very excited for this, this performance to air and to have gotten to do this, this gig basically together for yeah. the first time as a trio, which we've been wanting to do for a long time. And um, we're so happy that we got to do it and that people are going to hear it. So thank you. I think I think the fun you had is is conveyed. People will will feel that in hearing the the set of tunes. It was a it's a really wonderful set of all original music uh, written by Carmen and by Austin. And uh, are are those tunes that you've played before in other contexts, Carmen, or were they for this ensemble specifically, or? Um, a little of each. Uh, some of them, let's see, we played a tune of mine called Strindberg, which mm -hmm. were actually recorded and um, had also played with Tony in a different context. Um, and we played, we actually played a tune of Austin's that was kind of related to a piece that was written by his wife, Dana Sandler, mm -hmm. also recorded with. And, you know, so there's sort of these, these mm -hmm. things that come from something else, but also there were some, some new pieces. Um, Austin wrote a couple things that were mm -hmm. like hot off the press that we got to play. So yeah, um, he meant he mentioned that one of them he'd sort of half written early in the pandemic and then sort of hurried to finish in advance of that date, which was really exciting to hear that it, there was some some uh, some creative utility to having this particular date on the books. That that was really fun. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's one of the things that I think during this time it's been hard for, I know for myself and also I think for a lot of musicians to mm -hmm. really feel that motivation to yeah. compose, you know, and, or maybe even to practice because when you're not performing, not connecting with people, it's, it's just difficult, you know, for a lot of, mm -hmm. a lot of us. And so having something that we know is a time we're going to get to play in this like beautiful studio and mm -hmm. great musicians and have it be filmed in a really great way is super motivating to, <laughs> to mm -hmm. be creative. So. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm glad it had that effect. It was certainly exciting to, to be able to um, get to present the three of you. And it must have been such a strange change for you. You keep a very busy schedule. So having COVID um, bring everything to a halt so abruptly uh, must have been very disorienting. Yeah, it kind of was, definitely. I think, um, you know, in some ways, it's like I, I'm, I'm so grateful that I had gotten to the point where I was really playing pretty much for my job, you know, mm -hmm. to perform, which I spent many years not having that luxury, mm -hmm. yeah. really, you know, um, having to do a lot of different jobs, a lot of, you know, kind of part-time teaching, putting together, and which um, of course is also great, but mm -hmm. I really had the dream of getting to tour and perform, which I was getting to do. So ironically, <laughs> that meant that it was like total night and day when the pandemic hit. And um, all of the work that was in my calendar just totally vanished. Just into the air. Yeah, I guess for you and for so many other people. But yeah, it seems like in the year or two before all this happened, your schedule had gotten so busy. I think I shared with you when we uh, were at the studio that I had seen you the summer before COVID settled in. I, um, one of the highlights of the 2019 Newport Jazz Festival for me was the the parlor game set. Oh, um, thank you so really, much. Really, really, really beautiful. The, the, Carmen and, and Tony Cher, who's on, on this uh, cat trio. Have we even said cat trio aloud? But on, on this set that, that we're introducing now and uh, uh, wonderful drummer, Allison Miller, that you work a lot with and, and the, the just mind blowing uh, violinist, Jenny Scheinman, who, yeah. um, that's, I love that band. I, and uh, yeah, uh, you were getting a lot of work. That band was working a lot, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, and Parlor Game is really, it's really Jenny Scheinman and Allison Miller's mm -hmm project between the two of them mm -hmm. it's that the two of them you know wrote a bunch of music for mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. were just really motivated to make mm -hmm. it and not just a group of 
musicians who love mm -hmm. playing with each other, but like really developing the sound and mm -hmm. unique approach to music. And so mm -hmm. that was really cool because that's something that as a jazz musician, I don't always get a chance to mm. dig in to the music with a certain group of people in that kind of band mentality that maybe rock musicians or other, mm. other kinds of musicians sometimes mm. do. And so it's been really special to be a part of Parlor, Parlor Game and I hope we get back to it soon. Yeah, so are things starting to, what's happening now? I mean, as as the vaccination rollout continues and as things seem to be trending positively, like what's the forecast look like for musicians like yourself in the in the months to come? Well, I, you know, I wouldn't presume to say I know exactly. Yeah. Um, it's a little unclear still. Um, things look really positive here anyway, uh, at least in New York and, you mm -hmm. know, East and um, so I am starting to get calls for things and, you know, there's mm -hmm. talk about different gigs coming up in the fall or in, you know, spring of next year. And mm -hmm. so that's all really exciting. But then as we know, there's also, you know, like I actually just worked with these musicians in India who, um, we did oh. this collaboration on this track together. And, um, just during the time that we worked together, it turned out that a bunch of people involved in that project all got diagnosed with COVID, which oh. not surprising because, right. um, so many people there are getting it. So, yeah. you know, I, I, not to be a downer, but you know, no, I want to. It's, it's part of the truth, right? Yeah. Stuff, like we don't know what's going to happen, and and that this is like a global situation that we're in, and, mm -hmm. um, which is part of the reason that doing things like this, I think, is not necessarily going to go away. Is just you know this this sense that globally things seem like they've shifted a little bit, where you know it's this global pandemic and also we've been starting to make music in a way that's global and mm -hmm. you know we've been I've been involved in like teaching situations mm -hmm. and outreach situations where we really get to be in touch with people all over not just in my particular region mm -hmm. um, and so I think there's you know maybe a certain kind of side to it that hopefully we'll keep which is you know the, the good side of that mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. but yeah so going back to India it's 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 oh, it's tough to see what they're going through there. It's devastating. Yeah. 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 Really. Mm. I'm I'm yeah. thinking about them and all the places where people are still mm -hmm. really struggling and and uh, having a hard time with this. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, it's interesting to hear that in a way some of the the limitations of uh, of COVID and I mean it's, it feels a little weird to talk about sort of the positives in it but they are there and it sounds like you've had opportunity to do some work of a kind that maybe wouldn't have come your way if not for the necessity of working virtually. Yeah exactly yeah. that's uh -huh. true and uh -huh. um, you know all for me nothing will ever replace being right. in a musicians and improvising and yeah. moment because you know there's this process that happens when you aren't attached to a particular end result you uh -huh. know like not really about the product. It's about actually getting to that space of creating just of just movement and acting together, you know, breathing together, whatever it is in the moment. And so by definition, you have to do that in a room with people rather than it's a different thing to say, I'm, I'm going to create a track and this mm -hmm. is the part and this is the next. And that's also a beautiful, different kind of thing. But mm -hmm. for me, that spontaneous creation is something that you know we'll always have to be able to be in the same place to mm -hmm. do. Mm -hmm. But I think this is adding another thing, another mm -hmm. step to what mm -hmm. a lot of these musicians maybe weren't doing as much before, and maybe now we will do, mm -hmm. of, which is that more mm -hmm. you know, collaborative um, way of making music, mm -hmm. where we might all just be in different countries and all contributing to the same track. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. yeah. Well, it'll be interesting to see kind of how that um, shapes. The, the you know unfolding careers of people like yourself kind of going forward it sounds like it is a new a new strand that probably isn't going to go away as you say yeah it uh, probably won't and uh, uh, and i think it's i'm not quite sure how but i think it's related to the fact that you know we see this this pandemic and it's this global thing mm -hmm. we're literally breathing the same air as each other and that's the problem in mm -hmm. some way right mm -hmm. but that's also like it's such a great illustration of how interconnected we all are and the fact that, you know, like it doesn't really matter. I mean, we, we have seen inequalities that are heightened by this, but mm. in some way it affects everybody, you know, mm -hmm. and so like rich countries, poor countries. And so we all actually have to work together and, you know, it sounds like a, mm. <laughs> a platitude, but it's true that yeah. we've learned that yeah. 
this. And so I hope that in some way that that those lessons will be taken and we'll look forward and that as musicians too, we'll, we'll be thinking globally and um, collaboratively and, and, and thinking about how we're all connected. Mm -hmm. Well, you've, you've clearly embraced that um, kind of opening in this time. That's uh, exciting to hear about. So after this, uh, so th this Saturday will mark the, the public coming out of this new trio. So is there, is there more in store for, for, this, uh, for this entity? Well, we don't have anything, we don't have a specific date, but we, yeah. did, we are hoping to play more together. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, it's like Austin and I go way back, you know, we've been friends right. for a long time and we've been musical collaborators for a long time. And it's just, it's so great to get to, mm -hmm your friends with that you can play music with and just mm. share in that way and mm. same with Tony you know we just immediately connected when we first met a few years back and um I I feel like playing with Tony it's like you never know what's going to happen but you always know that you're going to be everything's going to be fine it's going to be so <laughs> <laughs> it's like feeling safe but also like that there's a sense of mystery and uh -huh. you know, so so maybe uh -huh. safe in the right word but but feeling like there's a security you mm -hmm. know Mm -hmm. uh, and so the two of them together, it's really, really cool. I'm excited to see where that could go. Yeah, well, there's a lot of possibility there. I have to say, if, if this is what the first, uh, I was saying to Carmen before we, we turned the recording on that I, I hadn't realized until we were in the studio that Austin and Tony had never met before that day, which I think folks who hear this set will um, have a hard time making sense of that fact because it uh, it does not sound that way <laughs> at all. So I. I'm really excited to have, have played some small role in facilitating that relationship, and uh, and I'm really eager to for everyone to to see the set and to to hear more about what what comes of the Cat Trio as uh, as time goes on. Yeah, me too. Uh, well, thank you so much, Mark, and I want to I also want to thank Greater Ashmont Main Street, and you know uh, it's just yeah. so important that you all are doing what you're doing and and oh. the music alive and keeping it happening because. Like I said, we need places to play. Mm. You know, no matter what, we need to have have gigs on the calendar. Right. <laughs> so yeah. yeah. So this has been this has been a really cool experience, and I really appreciate it. Well, back at you, Carmen. Thanks so much. Thank you, Mark. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye bye.